I was absolutely dying to see how the pitch mechanism worked and what these units involved. I have stolen one of the pitch artificial feel units. There's two in here. They've got two different part numbers, so I'm guessing they've got different amounts of spring pressure. And I'm just gonna put that to one side, let it sit there. Avionics engineer in me is just saying, Carl, don't put it on the, uh, the cannon plug there with the wire. That's gonna do some serious damage, but as we're not gonna be using those parts, it doesn't matter. This is what I'm calling a pitch artificial feel unit. There's two, and we're gonna take it apart, and I'm gonna show you just how clever and how simple this unit is. So this unit can be moved in both directions, in and out, there we go. And you'll get to a certain point, about 10 millimeters out, there it is, I can feel it already. So it's, it's quite easy to pull till about 10 millimeters, and then it gets exponentially harder. So as we move, we should still be able to replicate it on here. So let me bring this unit in, make sure the control rods aren't interfering with the base here. And so this artificial unit has got two springs in it. We've still got one connected, so I can show you on the side stick. And if we push it forward that much, basically we're operating spring one and it's relatively easy. But we get to there and then we push it further forward and we've got that progressive increase in force feel like so, and it's the same in reverse. Put that back to one side, stay. So in order to strip this, we're gonna take the cap off so we can see the insides. That just unscrews. I have removed all the locking wire, uh, safety wire, and the cap is nothing more than basically a cap with a bearing on the end. Now we've got the eye end on the other end, a lock nut, which is safety wired, a serrated washer and then a lock tab which fits into the locking groove of the rod. Now that is very important when you're working on real aircraft to make sure that they go and they align correctly. Okay, so there goes the iron. Basically that allows us now to take off the dust cap, that's all that is. And then we've got a chamfered spacer and a sliding spacer on the outside and all that does is it sets to make sure there's no play in the spring assembly. That'll make a bit more sense in a minute. Off comes the chamfered spacer and sliding spacer. There's the main body. And just like the sliding, the chamfered spacer, sorry, they've both got chamfered spacers at each end. And that's because, so we've got these chamfered ferrules at either end, and they are allowed to slide on this rod completely both ways. There we go, so one that way, one that way. And they fit into the chamfered spacer here. As you can see, that's how they act against each end. So this one acts against the main body there and we can push it out. Out it comes. If we go the other way now, and we want to make the rod extend, you can see that the large outer spring is still free to move for about eight to 10 millimeters. Then we contact the smaller inner spring just here. Okay, so if you watch this gap here, the sliding ferrule moves. There we go. So we've, we've moved about eight millimeters and now our pressure starts to increase a lot, <laughs> a lot, lot, lot. In fact, I'm finding that much harder to go that way. It, that's taking a lot of effort. And if I just quickly tilt this back the other way, you should see that the spring and the sliding spacer are free to move up and down on the sliding ferrule there. Once again, so up to 15 degrees of movement, about eight to 10 millimeters in movement on the rod here. We're just acting against the first spring. And then as it comes into contact, we're using both springs and then we're using the spring force of both springs to to compress, which that's what makes it so much harder. Bear in mind, we've actually got two of these artificial feel units in the pitch lane. So I'm struggling to do it with just one hand, uh, with two hands now, but can you imagine having two of these together? And that is why the pitch lane feels so awesome. The plan, draw this upon fusion. 
create a CAD version of the exact replica. So we've got it on CAD and then adopt it to make it 3D printable. I can tell you now that the springs are readily available from the manufacturer and they are between three and four pounds each for the exact same springs. So what we can do in the meantime, so work isn't at a stop, we can take the springs off this unit, keep it to one side, take the springs out, and then make a 3D printed version that we can compare. Now, luckily enough, we've got two units, so we can take the springs out of this and just keep adapting the 3D printed unit to A, it's strong enough, B, it looks pretty similar, and C, it has to feel the same. The whole reason we're doing this is to make sure that when you guys create this assembly eventually, that it feels like the real unit. And I can tell you now, it just doesn't feel like a computer joystick like I thought it would. There's a lot of engineering, a lot of clever stuff going on in there, and I absolutely love it. So to strip it down, I've just got a 10 mil nut on the end here, and I have to be honest, it is rather stiff. So off comes the castellated nut. Off comes the spacer, the washer. Off comes the first sliding ferrule. And within that, we have got plastic sliding ferrules inside. Can you see that? Which makes it feel really smooth on the festulized portion of the actuator rod. So on this sliding ferrule, we've got the small sliding spacer. There we go. And that is really loose, as in it's not a, uh, a tight tolerance fit. It's actually very, there's actually a lot of play in that. We've got our large spring. We've got our small spring. We've got our large spring sliding spacer. And then we've got our other sliding ferrule. There it is, chamfered sliding ferrule that is, sorry. There we go. And then we've got our actuator rod. Very simple design, but actually very clever. So in reverse, on goes the sliding ferrule sliding spacer. We will put the small spring on, large spring. I'm going to place, I'm going to leave the small sliding spacer on the sliding ferrule. There it goes. On goes the washer, castellated nut. Let's see if we can get this tightened up. So right now, there is no play in the outer spring or the ferrule. So the ferrules are being held firmly at each end. They're being expanded by the center spring. There's no play in it. That's gonna slide nose first into the main body. Now to ensure that there's no play in the system, I'm guessing that's what this ring is for and why it's not permanently on there these probably come in different sizes and they take up the play in the spring assembly. So different ones will remove different amounts of play. I'm just guessing that, but there we go. And just to confirm, there's no play now in the unit. Then the cap goes on. That would be safety wired together, lock wired. And then we've got our actuator with the eye end on. That is it. It makes for a great artificial force unit. Well, whoever designed that is a legend. That, that's clever to fit so much into such a small space and to have two of them. And I would guess the reason why we've got two is if one, if one spring was to crack or fail, we've also got the other unit to take over. So it's not gonna go floppy and cause haywire with the aircraft systems. Guys, I hope that just explains how clever I find this bit of kit. It's absolutely awesome. 
Uh, I wish I'd thought of it, because that is, as many people and many patrons have said already, we probably can use that in various places on the 737. So in front of me, I've designed the PAFU, the Pitch Artificial Force Unit, and absolutely amazing bit of kit. You've seen how I've taken it apart. Now the whole thing has been replicated on CAD, and here it is in front of me. So there it is there, it's all done. Now these are exact millimeter digital precision measured. And if we take the cap here, we can hide the dust cover and let's split it in half so you can see the inside. There we go. If I hide the main body, if I hide the main body, there we go. We can see all the internals, the springs and how the assembly is made. Now, while I was doing this, I was thinking, do you know what? I actually think we could 3D print it without having to make any modifications because all the parts are quite substantial. Now, they're probably not substantial for long-term use and we need to increase the thickness of certain parts to make it last a lot longer but i thought why not just put print press print on the filament printers and see what happens and let's head over to the desk and i'll show you what happened here we have the unopened pafu there it is so that hasn't been touched it has not been disturbed here is the one that's been stripped down and this is what I took all the CAD measurements from. There we go. There's the dust cover and the main body and cap. There's the guts of the mechanism. Right, we can put that to one side. Now, as I said on the computer, I thought I'd just push print and see what happens. Now, 608 bearing, that's a skater board bearing, can go in the top there. And I'm yet to find an eye end. Not gonna use a giant eight millimeter rod eye end, not at the moment yet, but probably a four millimeter eye end if I can find one, which shouldn't be a problem if not I'll 3D print one. Dust cover, that's filament printed, beautiful. And they are completely interchangeable. Same as the cap. Now I cannot believe that this screw thread worked first time. What I've done is I've sliced it down to check the fit of the threads because I didn't want to print the whole cap assembly and the whole main assembly uh, just to find out the threads don't fit. However, first time, I can't believe it. First time, so this is the top part of the main body. I've just cut off the end and the same as the cap. And believe it or not, they go together so well. So actually I could print the whole assembly. And we've got a working cap and body assembly. There we go. Out comes the main body. And of course we can just change the parts over. They're both, that's how good the tolerances are. Right, where do we get to? There is the 3D printed assembly. There's our ferrule and spacer, sliding spacer for the small spring. Now I also managed to find the supplier of the springs for the PAFU. So, identical spring, identical spring. And I did go to the bother of messing the, measuring the compression, the force, uh, to ensure that they were exact. So we've got those ones, those ones, and the, the manufacturer off, offered different forces, but of the same dimensions. So that's why I had to measure them, and it just happened to be, I bought quite a few of the different sizes. It happens to be these exact ones here. So when I release the CAD design, I'll make sure that these parts are listed. They're about three pounds each. So actually, well worth buying. These are slightly stronger, so if you want a better feel, but that's not how the real aircraft works. Well, not the version that I've got sat in front of me. So it has to be these ones here, which is why I've labeled these packets as the ones needed. So there we've got our rod. You can see that I have made a slight change and I've put a four millimeter rod all the way through it. I thought that's five millimeter. That's to give it structural strength for 3D printing. That's the only change I made so far. The ferrules and the spacers, they're all resin printed and I'll quickly rebuild it. So there's the small spring, there's the large spring. The other ferrule and then we've got just the nut to hold it together 
And there you can see we've got our two springs together. So we've got activation of the large spring straight away. And then we have to compress it to there for the second spring to engage. I can't believe how good the 3D printed version without any major modifications. I mean, even the wool thickness of the 3D printed parts are the same. So that's going to go in there. Use the resin printed spacers. Where's the cap? There's the cap. That just screws together. And then we've got our in and out PAFU. Exactly the same. That's the original PAFU built back to how it was made. Of course, there's two of these, so you need four springs in total. So there goes the dust cover. I can move it with my hand. Now this one is slightly harder to operate because I haven't got a big eye end to grab, but there you go. I am absolutely blown away with how that's turned out just on first print. This hasn't even gone into redesigning it for 3D printing. That is just pushing print from the parts I created from CAD and it has turned out amazingly. Right guys, I know this project has been a long time coming. I actually had this video done like 48 hours after uh, releasing the last video, but I never got around to releasing this part of it. And that's because the new MCP for the 737 is fully done, the PCB is there, and that will be the next release. In the meantime, you may have noticed on the old CAD screen when I showed the CAD of this, that the A320 side stick is pretty much completely assembled in CAD, all bar the last three parts which are in a bag over there. Can't wait to release this whole design. I think it's gonna be completely next level. The, the authenticity of the parts, how they operate, if we can just replicate each part 3D printed, it means you can have a fully working A320 side stick at home and it's gonna feel and look just like the real thing. Until the next video guys, sim out.